to talk a little bit about what spotted lanternfly is. It is our kind of newest invasive insect arrival, um, as well as this time of year and through the winter, you know, if you're looking for its eggs, which it's a good time to do that, um, what might you see? So give you give you some things to scout for with a uh, spotted lanternfly, um, because the sooner we can find it, uh, the better. Um, and if you do happen to find some of those eggs, um, not only would it be great to report those um, to someone so we can have a better idea of where it is in the state. Um, are there new infestations we don't know about? But you can also squish those eggs and squish that spotted lanternfly <laughs> <laughs> before it even hatches. I like it. <laughs> We're looking so, Thank you. Yeah, so a little bit of background on spotted lanternfly. Um, I bet if you're watching from the woods today, you've heard about this invasive before. Um, here's a picture of what the adult spotted lanternflies might look like. Um, honestly, they're kind of pretty. Uh, if it weren't for the fact that they are going to be a gross nuisance. Um, they have uh, these kind of polka dots and stripes on their wings. Um, they look like maybe kind of small cicadas or large um, plant hoppers uh, scurrying around on things. But the problem with them is that they congregate in large numbers and will suck the sap from plants, um, a really wide range of different species. Uh, so not only could that be a stressor to some plants, depending on you know how many spotted lantern flies there are and um, the plants they're feeding on, but it's just gross. Uh, it's just a gross thing. So imagine this is the tree in your front yard and it's totally covered with spotted lantern fly. Yuck. Um, not only is that just a lot of insects, but they are excreting sugary honeydew. Their excrement is going to be kind of sugary water. And um, when they do that, it's going to promote the growth of black city mold all over everything. Um, and, you know, that's gross for us in our landscape setting. Um, but it could be really detrimental to plants in other areas, especially if you think about orchards and vineyards, um, this could be a real problem. So uh, people are concerned about it and um, are, are you know, really on the lookout for spotted lanternfly. So here is um, a little nymph of the spotted lanternfly it, in its younger stage before it becomes an adult, but after it hatches, and you can see it on its very favorite host plant of all times, a tree of heaven. Now, tree of heaven is an invasive tree uh, that we don't want. You don't want on your property, you don't want in your woods, and you don't want in your backyard uh, for a number of reasons. It grows really fast, it takes over, um, it seeds into everything and clogs it up. Uh, but if spotted lanternfly just stayed on tree of heaven, um, which is I think their native ranges overlap uh, where they're from in Asia. So if it just fed on Tree of Heaven, we'd be totally fine. Um, it can maybe control some Tree of Heaven for us a little bit, although I don't know how effective it would be in that role. Unfortunately, though, Spotted Lanternfly doesn't stay on Tree of Heaven. It will feed on a wide range of other plants. While it feeds on or can feed on many of our deciduous uh, plant species that we would have growing around here, as well as those in the landscape setting, it's really a biggest concern for our orchards and vineyards, um, both in terms of stressing those trees that are growing there, but also the impact that that might have to that crop long term. Um, so just a, a little bit of information about spotted lanternfly and what it has a potential to feed on. The answer is pretty much everything. Um, and a couple other pictures of what it looks like through its life cycle. So it would start out life as an egg and you can see these eggs on um, this tree bark here. Uh, these eggs are kind of laid in lines. They might look like you know, tiny little packages, um, little rectangular shapes. And then those might be covered with this waxy substance um, by the female spotted lanternfly as she lays them to kind of hide them in there and disguise them. That can make them really hard to find. And unfortunately, not only uh, do spotted lanternflies lay their eggs on trees, like in this picture, but they'll lay them on just about anything um, from, you know, barrels, like in this picture, to vehicles. Uh, so that's a really 
easy way for spotted lanternfly to accidentally be moved from one place to another, having eggs laid on your truck or your car, accidentally moving it. Uh, so we're likely to see a really fast spread of spotted lanternfly just because it is so easy for it to get around unintentionally by us as well as on its own. So those eggs would hatch into these little nymphs. And you can see they go through a couple different phases and look different in each of those phases. Um, here you see these black with white polka dotted nymphs. That's going to be the, the very youngest ones. And they're scurrying around and hopping around on this tree of heaven shoot that you see here. Those are going to grow and develop into a second phase that looks a little different. These are going to be red and black with white polka dots on them. Still very noteworthy and eye-catching. And you can see in this picture, they can congregate with lots of them, um, be noticeable. And then those are going to develop into adults that look like that uh, first picture of spotted lantern fly. Now, if you see pictures where they look like this, they look like a butterfly or a moth with their wings pinned out, that's really not what you're going to see. Um, you can pin the wings out and it looks like that, but more often they're going to look like this, kind of scurrying around um, on the bark or branches or trunk of a tree or plant. Um, so with that, where is spotted lantern fly right now? Well, here's its distribution across the eastern U.S. at the moment. You can see that it's been present in this mid-Atlantic region for quite some time. Pennsylvania, Maryland, um, this is known to be a problem and a big nuisance. But more recently, it's been spreading out. And those are probably unintentional movement of spotted lanternflies on vehicles, on equipment, on different materials. And we recently had our very first positive infestation confirmed here in Kentucky. You can see right here along the border with Indiana, um, we've had a positive in Kentucky. And you might've heard about this last fall when that happened, lots of news articles out and about um, spotted lantern fly confirmed in Kentucky for the first time in Gallatin County um, and concern about that. And I think, you know, to some extent, we don't really know what that's going to bring for our area. Um, we know it's going to be a nuisance and we know it's going to uh, impact trees in our landscape setting as well as vineyards and orchards. From the forest setting, it's a little bit less clear what that's going to mean. Either way, it's another invasive that we don't want. And one of the things that is recommended for spotted lanternfly in areas where it is established is scouting for the eggs and squishing them before they hatch. That way you can at least hopefully prevent as much spotted lanternfly from emerging as would otherwise um, decrease both kind of its spread and potential damage there. So you'll see a lot of states where it's been established um, to, uh, you know, notices that you should kill them if you see them and squish them on site. So I thought this could be a good time to talk about what to look for this time of year and as well as through the winter um, for spotted lanternfly. Um, I was able last winter to visit a positive um, infestation in Indiana. They've had spotted lantern fly for a little bit longer than we have here in Kentucky. And look at uh, what those eggs look like in the woods. So what are we looking for when we're looking for spotted lantern fly? We went out and scouted them for a day with the Indiana Department of Natural Resources, who was trying to eradicate or at least contain uh, the spotted lantern fly infestation. So a big shout out to them and appreciate them inviting me down to check those out. So in this picture, you can see a tree. And what you might not see right off the bat is all of the spotted lanternfly egg masses. Um, so right there, you can see a whole collection of eight different spotted lanternfly egg masses on this one tree. You can imagine that in the woods, there are lots and lots of those and they can be really hard to find. Um, and I wanted to show you some pictures of what to look for if you're scouting for spotted lanternfly. Now, if this was uh, one tree in a landscape setting, it would be a lot easier um, than kind of scouring a forested area, but hopefully giving you some different examples based on what I observed there in southern Indiana. So what to look for? 
I'd say the very first thing you could be looking for is trees with a lot of black sooty mold. Um, if you see this tree right here, uh, it's just covered with black sooty mold. Now that's not the spotted lanternfly per se, but what that tells me is that that is probably the result of some insect, in this case, definitely spotted lanternfly, um, excreting lots of honeydew, that sugary substance that they produce uh, when they are sucking the sap from trees. Imagine this little bug is sucking the sap from trees and plants. Um, it's pipelined into that sugar water of the tree, so its excrement is also going to be pretty sugary. And when it excretes that and it gets on a plant, a building, your vehicle, um, it's going to be a great food source for this black sooty mold. Um, so you can use that in your scouting to say, are you seeing anything like that? And there are some other things that can cause this uh, black sooty mold, but if you're scouting for spotted lanternfly and you see this, it definitely merits further investigation to kind of see what's going on there. Um, signs of that that sooty mold is a, is, a, is a thing to look twice at. Um, another thing to look for would be sites with lots of tree of heaven. So spotted lanternfly can feed on lots of different things, but it really likes tree of heaven. And so if you have an area that has a lot of tree of heaven, that would be the first place that I would look for. And then I would look to see, are you seeing this black sooty mold on any of those trees? Um, another thing to look for would be those egg masses this time of year. Um, so most eggs are covered with this gray mud-like coating that you can see right here. This is my hand holding a bit of bark. Um, you can see some of them are covered up with this um, and some aren't. You might kind of see right here and right here, you have those lines of uh, eggs that have been laid, but they weren't covered up with that muddy looking coating. Um, and it's kind of easy to see them in that picture, but let's look at a few others so you can see the challenges there. Where did these eggs get laid? Well, everywhere. But it seems like the spotted lanternfly really like to hide them away. For example, under the flaky bark of trees. So you can see in this one, there's a couple of little egg masses hidden away just under these flaky bark um, spots. Also, you can find them in hard to reach spots, which is tough when you're trying to squish them all. Um, here's an egg mass at the base of a tree right there. Um, here's an egg mass higher up in a tree, uh, hard for us to reach for sure. And in this picture, you can see um, the, the technique for squishing and scraping those eggs is typically to use um, something like this device here uh, that, you know, just a, a, any anything that lets you squish the eggs and then scrape them off the tree. You wanna squish them first so that you're not just scraping them off to hatch somewhere else. Um, so it's kind of gross and you get splattered egg goo everywhere, but it also feels very satisfying to be squishing lots of spotted lanternfly eggs. Here's another picture. They can really be hidden. This is a hackberry and you can, or maybe missed it at first, but those eggs uh, laid right there in that furrow in the bark. Um, I also found we have a lot of dead ash from emerald ash borer that's killed those trees. And it seemed like the spotted lanternfly loved laying them under the flaking off bark of those dead ash trees. So here you can see me peeling back some bark and this egg mass right in there. Unfortunately, uh, these spotted lanternflies are very crafty and clever with where they lay those eggs. Here's another a uh, picture of me pulling off some bark of a tree that had been killed by the emerald ash borer. And you can just see all of the egg masses um, throughout here. Um, and if you do see those, um, squishing them and then peeling them off of the tree. Um, but if you're seeing anything like this in Kentucky, um, really what we want to know is we want to know about it. We want to know where you're seeing that. Maybe it's spotted lanternfly, but maybe it's something else. There are uh, many other insects that are laying their eggs on trees. Some of them might be beneficial. Some might be other invasives that we don't want. So if you are seeing something uh, unusual, whether it's spotted lanternfly or something else, really encourage 
encourage you to report it. If you see something, say something. So you can report these types of things to your county extension agent, and they'll help you get them to the right person. In addition, in addition there's some great technology out there to help you find and identify these species. I really recommend things like iNaturalist. If you're seeing something and you're not sure what it is, you can always take a picture with iNaturalist. Not only does that help you identify things, but it also reports it to a broader community that can follow up on um, anything potentially suspicious.